What's up YouTube, it's Fitzbro, and somebody in my comment section asked, what are all of the units and the counters in Age of Empires 4? Because if you're new to the game, those counters are gonna be very important to you to understanding how to build your army and what fights to take. So let's dig through all these as if we're brand new to the game, uh, or you might just pick up some tips uh, if you've got a little experience under your, under your belt and looking to take your gameplay to the next level. If you are looking for Age of Empires, build orders, cast a game, Tips and, tip, tips and tricks, I've got them all here on the channel, so hit the subscribe button, leave me a little comment because I might make a video that you want to see, uh, just like this uh, This video was inspired by a previous comment, and follow me over on twitch.tv slash fitzbro. Let's dig into this. Now, Age of Empires 4 is a little bit asymmetric with our sieve design, so you have to take everything with a grain of salt because each sieve is going to have some special units, but in general they fall into similar roles, and I think you should be able to figure it out as uh, you play the game. So starting off, you can't go talk about counters without at least talking about your villager and your scout. Now, villagers, we're probably, probably not going to be countering a whole lot with this, but I will tell you, they get some torches. So if you go up against some rams uh, here under your town center, the, ram the villagers use torch damage against rams. So it's good to know that villagers do counter rams if you find yourself in a scenario where rams are pushing into your base. You got the scouts you start off with. This is just a general unit for scouting, getting line of sight. Very important to have, of course, if there's stealth forest so you can see what's going on. So you can have line of sight for those battles so you don't take a bad fight. But it doesn't really counter a whole lot. It's just going to be a general scout, maybe a little bit of meat shield. Uh, it can do one damage, but that's not going to be very helpful. The very first unit you can build is going to be here at your barracks. Now, each of these buildings costs 150 wood to build, unless you're the Ottomans, which in case it will take cost 100 wood to build. And you can train the Spearmen. It's the first unit you're able to train during the game. Now, some civs, you have to actually purchase that upgrade when you get to the Feudal Age. So be aware of that. Are you playing a civ that needs upgraded or automatically has it upgraded when you hit the Second Age? Because that's going to matter if you've got maybe some knights bearing down on you. So let's go ahead and train one of those scouts. It costs 60 food and 20 wood, so relatively inexpensive. And this unit, it's got a spear. And you might have guessed it. It is particularly good against cavalry units. You can see anti-cav specialist. It's weak against armor and infantry and countered hard by archer. So it's a little bit of a rock, paper, scissors here. So let's get each one of the options you would see here in the Dark Age. So you've got your scout. I'm sorry, your, uh, your spearman, you've got an archer, and you've got your horseman. This is the core roster that most civs have. Now, some, such as uh, the French here, would have access to the knight in the second age, but we'll, we'll just pretend we'll talk about the knights when we get to the third age. Okay, so the spearman is going to be the counter to the horseman. The horseman is going to be the counter to the archer, and the archer is going to be the counter to the spearman. Makes sense. Now, why is that? Well, if we look at the stats here, you see the Spearman does not have any ranged armor. So every time this archer shoots, it's going to take the full damage. Uh, and if we took a look at the stat of the archer, uh, when it fires, now this is with just the base stats, it is going to do 5 damage plus an additional 5 multiplier. So that's a total of 10 versus light melee infantry, which this is. So it'll take 10 damage. Now, assuming if you have eight archers, that's going to one-shot a spearman. Now you can get some armors and all of that down the road, but basically get the point. This archer is doing bonus damage to the spearman. Spearman, on the other hand, if you look at the stats of this unit, it has seven base damage. It has plus 17 versus cavalry. Okay, so that is going to be a lot of additional damage that they will do against a unit like a horseman here, which you see has 125 HP. Um, they also have a brace that they'll perform. It doesn't really show it on the tooltip, but as the cav uh, charges in, your spears will brace and it will stun that charging uh, knight or horseman for a moment and allow you to get some extra pokes off, and that could be really awesome. And then the horseman, it's going to be good against the archer. Well, look at its stat. It has 9 melee damage and plus 9 versus ranged. Okay, so that's going to be 18 damage it's going to do versus this archer that only has 70 HP. Not to mention, uh, if you've got a knight, it's going to do some charge damage, uh, some things to consider there, and they're very, very speedy. They also have plus 10 damage versus siege, so very good to use against. It'll be mangonels, trebuchets, uh, rams, whatever it might be. But... 
starting out in the feudal age, this is the basic counter system you need to know. So the archer is going to counter the spearman, spearman is going to counter the horseman, horseman is going to counter the archer. We got that down. Now, you could take a sieve like this. We've got, uh, well, we'll talk about those units in the next stage. Uh, so let's pretend we just advanced to the third age. Let's see what other units are available. Okay, so now some sieves do have this in the second age, uh, like such as the English or the HRE. We've got the man at arms. There he is. Now this enters our very first armored unit. Now, this guy looks very good. You can look at his stats. He's got a base armor of four against range. That means if this archer does five damage, He's going to soak up four of that. So he's only going to take one damage. And he has 155 HP. So are archers going to do a whole lot of damage for span arms? Absolutely not. So that's why they're very good against range because they're going to have uh, some resistance to that. And he's also got four melee damage. So Spearman starts poking him. He's going to be absorbing four of that damage. I mean, a Spearman does a seven base. They actually just got a little bit of a buff this recent patch. Uh, but again, not super duper effective. So these are very good against unarmored targets. They're also good for when you have to dive underneath enemy town center or towers because they're going to be tanking all of those arrow shots because you can see, not to mention you're going to get plus one, plus two ranged armor. They're going to be even better. And not to mention some sales even got additional stats on this man arm. So in general, use them against squishy targets or as your front line to absorb uh, that arrow fire so you can have the rest of your units protected a little bit. Now, what would be the counter to the man at arms? Well, your best counter is going to be your crossbow. Now, in this case, we've got the unique unit because it's the arbitrary of the French. So take it with a grain of salt as far as looking at these stats, but it's similar to a crossbow. Why is a crossbow effective against the man at arms? Well, let's look at this. Uh, it does 12 range damage space here and will get plus nine versus heavy. So similar to these other counters we saw where they had multipliers versus uh, or additional damage versus their counter unit, the arbitrary are going to be particularly good against the mana arms. So if you see a bunch of mana arms, crossbow are going to be your best option, or you can go to toe-to-toe -to 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 with them. They can you have your own mana arms or a knight. Let's take a look at that knight. Let's pop the knight out. Now this is the royal knight because it's the French, so he's a little more badass than your typical knight. Now the crossbow, it did say that he does additional damage versus heavy. So that will uh, that will have to do with the knight as well. This is considered a heavy melee cavalry, so he will get that multiplier against the knight. So again, going to put that 12 plus 9. It, the arbitrary will not get the multiplier versus horsemen, but will still do that base damage, which still is ain't too shabby on its own, right? But that's what you need to know. The crossbow will, will be good against both these. Now, looking at the arbitrary stats, even though it is very good against uh, it, the damage it deals out to armored units, it doesn't have a ton of defense. It does come with one base uh, melee armor. So you can see there, it, this will uh, have some armor, but if you got a bunch of man arms or, or a knight charge in, if you don't have a meat shield for your crossbow line, man arms and knights can still be effective. But typically, you're gonna see something where if there's a bunch of crossbows, they're gonna they're gonna shoot and scoot, they're gonna shoot and kite back, and they'll be able to whittle all of your knights down. So you don't or or knights or crossbow or man arms, whatever it might be. So you gotta be careful with that. But in general, just think about crossbows gonna counter all of your ranged uh, that you're gonna see. Now, the knight, of course, it's going to counter uh, the archers the same as we saw uh, before with the horsemen. We've got, uh, it's got 29 lance. Now, it actually doesn't get any additional damage versus versus uh, the archers, it doesn't say. But it's got 29 lance, and it's got a charged attack, which you're not going to see here on the stat. Um, and it's got lots of armor. So three melee armor, three range armor. This is just the base stat. So it's going to resist a lot. The course, a spearman trade versus this. Uh, this is a very cheap unit. I think of, of this knight's going to be 140 food, 100 gold. Uh, a spearman only costs 60 food and 20 wood. You should need a few of these to kill a knight. The knight's going to be able to just take a one-on-one -on -one fight against a spearman. But if you have a few spearmen, especially if you get a brace off, they're going to be your best option for going up against the knight. So either the spearman or the crossbow against the knight. And of course, you get a combination of some of these units. Now, a thing to know, the horseman is going to have a greater speed than the knight. So the horseman, it has 1.88 movement speed based where the knight has 1.62 so you can outrun uh, whether it's with raiding or running away or trying to flank with your horseman that's going to be your speediest option 
But of course, Horseman does has a base two ranged armor, but does not have that melee armor. Not going to be as tanky as the knight. So you kind of kind of choose which unit is going to be best for you. Of course, knight being a larger investment and going to be receiving those multipliers against uh, from a crossbow. Okay, so that's that core roster of units we have there. Now let's go into the siege units. So here at the siege workshop, we've got the, the springgold. Now the springgold, this is your anti siege siege unit. Okay, costs 250 wood and 250 gold. And this bad boy, uh, if you look at the stats here, has 30 base damage. It has an additional 70 versus siege or versus ship. Uh, so it'll do 100 damage basically per shot. So if you see like the Springled has 125 damage, two Springles will one shot a single Springle. So if your enemy, if you got a bunch of crossbows and your enemy's making mangonel, you'll want a Springled to try to counter them. And let's talk about that. So the Springled's going to counter any siege out there. You've got the mangonel. Now the mangonel, this thing costs 400 wood and 200 gold. This is the specialist you have versus range. It's particularly good against range units, but also good against just unarmored units in general. Um, so this thing, it has 12 mangonel siege damage. It has plus 24 versus building ships and plus 6 versus range. So it's going to do additional damage, additional plus uh, six damage versus those archers. So if your enemy has a mass of archers, hit him with the mangonel. It's going to hurt a lot. And they do this area effect. So if it's a clump of archers, mangonel is going to be extremely effective. Like, look at this. Area. I can attack ground here. Uh, there we go. And you can see that fires a bunch of projectiles. So that's going to do some damage. Uh, so let's stop that let's, so you don't keep firing. So that is your mangonel, uh, good against uh, groups of targets, particularly unarmored, really good against art or ranged, and it can also be used to take down buildings if you got enough of them. It's going to do some damage. Good against villagers as well. The trebuchet, this is your long range specialist. This thing can shoot from very far away. He's going to set up, I'll set an attack ground, and look at that. Look how far he can hit. Sometimes the trick with the trebuchet is make sure you have a line of sight of the target you're hitting, otherwise it might keep trying to path up. A trick you can get around this is actually using this attack ground, as I did right here. You can actually sometimes hit targets out of the line of sight without him rolling all the way up there. Now, if we look at the, uh, look at the stats here on this unit, uh, it, it costs uh, 500 wood and 250 gold, a large investment. Make sure you protect it. These are too expensive just to lose right away. Um, and look at the stats on these, though. They do 50 trebuchet siege, an additional plus 450 versus buildings. So that's 500 base damage versus buildings, an additional 200 for ship. They do have a chance to miss, so you should know that they could miss. They don't have a 100% uh, accuracy rate. But in general, this is good for like taking those keeps down. They'll do a lot of damage. They're slow, okay? So it's not going to, if an enemy is like healing up, they're, they're repairing their keep with their villagers, you're going to need several of these because they can keep repairing it. And if Springlets come in, these are low investment and snipe them. That's a, a lot of resource you lose. It's just 500 wood and 250 gold. Okay, so have a bunch of these if you're going to go for a siege. Like two, three, you're going to do a lot against those people. Four trebuchets and you're doing amazing. But this is your long range options. A lot of times people like to build a keep and then have the trebuchet, your siege just like sitting underneath this keep so that they can't fight in because this is going to shoot off like flurries of arrows. By the way, if you were running underneath this keep, firing arrows, you don't typically want to run under it, but if you did, these would be the two units you'd want tanking the damage, right? Because they've got additional ranged armor. Also more expensive units you don't want to lose. Don't go under keeps. Take them down with trebuchets, and you'll feel good. Okay, um, let's go to our next age so we can make sure we can show you the final units we got going on here. I'll go ahead and drop the red palace. Boom. Cheat codes are great. And, okay, now we've got some unique units here for the fr for the French, so I can't show you everything. Some some civilizations have their unique uh, siege units, but they're going to fit very similar roles. So you've got the cannon here with the French, is what they call it. It's the unique one. But for most civs, you've got the bombard, which is going to be particularly good against buildings. That's what you want to use cannons for. You've got your bombards that are good against buildings, and then you have culverin which is the anti-cannon cannon it's going to snipe out those enemy siege units with like one shot uh for some of them depending on what it is so the french don't have access to the culverin but culverin are going to be basically like the chad version of the springhold more expensive too so be aware of that these the french actually have access to the ribaldequin which is a very unique unit i honestly don't do use it a whole lot sometimes it's just kind of considered a meme but it deals a little damage to buildings but can hit multiple targets so if we look at the stats here on that ribaldequin you can see 42 damage uh 12 burst 
it's going to be good for uh, shredding some infantry um, and they actually have 10 melee armor which is unique most of the rain most of these siege have zero melee armies armor so they're very 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 squishy to horsemen or night raids so that's one thing unique a little bit about the Rebaldequin. now this unit you're not really using to fight but you've got your your scot whether it's a monk or a scholar or a warrior priest whatever it is uh this is going to be used for healing so you can use it to heal up your units you can use it to pick up relics out of the map or take sacred sites so there's gonna be your options there for the monk civilizations like uh the delhi sultanate uh, or the hre it's typical to have those in with your army healing while you are fighting same thing for the roost a little bit too but with that, we have pretty much covered all of the core counters you were going to see. So we'll do a real quick recap. Spearman, this is going to be great if you're going up against either a horseman or a royal knight. Also, of course, you're going to be able to use this for taking down buildings. Uh, but that is going to be uh, what you're going to do with that. We got the uh, archer, which is going to be good against the spearman. Oh, I didn't mention the archers are also pretty uh, effective targets against the, the crossbow because crossbows don't have any ranged armor and they're more expensive. We look at it here. Uh, it is significantly more expensive and the archers, while they won't get hard countered or any additional multiplayers from the crossbow, so you can make a bunch of archers too. can be a good option against uh, if your enemy is making spearmen or a bunch of crossbows or something like that. Okay, the horseman, that's going to be good for countering. The archer, you know, the horseman is actually your, one of your best Dark Age options against ma mana arms. If you see them for some of those civs that have early ones, just because they've got uh, the best attack, doing nine attack compared to the seven of the spearmen. Uh, but again, you typically want to have something that's going to counter those mana arms. Now, fun fact, if you're playing the Abbasid, your camel archers are excellent against armor. So they do some additional pierce. So you can use those against mana arms or even against uh, knights. Uh, you've also got um, other civilizations. Oh, I didn't. I, I. Oh my gosh! I almost missed one. I almost missed one. The hand cannoneer. You get this in age four. That's why I went to age four. The hand cannoneer. This thing is a badass. It shreds everything, but particularly will be good for penetrating and destroying those armored targets. Look at that powerful all-purpose uh, range infantry unit. High damage, high cost, low movement speed, and it's countered by horsemen. So you got to watch out for that because he's got the range tag. So the horseman's going to be very good against them. 35 range damage. So, you know, you can have your four armor. Cool. I'm still doing 31 damage. Imagine if you have a few of those, you're going to wipe out units. So hand is very expensive, very gold heavy as well. So you got to be careful about spamming these, but they could be good. If you build them, keep them alive. You've also got the unique version of this, the Streltsy with the Roos. You've got the Janissary with the Ottomans, which are kind of like weaker hand cannoneers, but they're very good against cav units. So they're kind of like an anti-cav specialist. That's a, kind of a weirder sieve. Um, Streltsy being all around, very good, uh, but that's the hand cannon here. Uh, keeping moving on our roster, crossbow is going to be good against either the man arms or the knight. The man arms going to be good against the spearman, the archer, or anything else squishy or diving in town. So there's knights are great for raiding, running in, getting a target, taking it out with that charge. It just does well, good damage against everything. It can take on spearmen in low numbers, but in general, uh, you want to keep your knights alive because they're very expensive. Coming over to our siege, we've got the spring gold, which is good at sniping all of the siege units. You got the Mangana, which is going to be good specifically against uh, squishy units or against some buildings if you want to. Trebuchet is good at taking out buildings from range. You get the Bombard, which is very, very good at taking out buildings, but uh, quite expensive, of course, looking at that. 600 gold for it would for this version of it. And then the Rebaldo Queen, which is a unique thing here for the French, which is good for shredding some infantry. Other civs might have access to the Culverin, which would be a good anti- artillery unit and then you've got the chinese got a nest of bees it's basically kind of like a fancy manga now it shoots out fireworks but it does very similar things and with that those are all the unit counters so did i miss anything did i get everything right let me know down in the comments also if this helped you out or something you're looking for give me a thumbs up get that subscribe button let me know about it and let me know are there any other topics you are hoping that i will cover on the channel thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one